It's time. We gotta talk about Chicago Marathon shoes. Good morning, YouTube. Bah. What's up, everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. So this is gonna be kind of like an informal video today. There's no like run sequence here. We're just gonna have a little chat and we're gonna chat about what the hell shoes I should wear for the Chicago Marathon. Now, if you've been following my journey for a long time with my training and the shoes and all that good stuff, then you know that I originally wanted to start out not really trying a lot of different shoes because I didn't want my plantar fasciitis to flare up. So I was very worried that that would be the case and I would have some kind of issue. So I was like, nope, not gonna try a million shoes. Sorry guys, you're not gonna have a lot of shoe videos in the next coming months because I'm just not gonna be wearing that many. But that turned out to be a complete lie. Let's start from the top, shall we? I originally started training in the Nike Invincible. I love the shoe, still do, but during long runs, it just, the overpronation made my PF flare up a little too much. So I switched to the Hoka Arahi 5, which I like, don't get me wrong, but it didn't really um, excite me as much as I had wanted it to or hoped it would. So then I tried the New Balance Vongo V5, another stability shoe, and this shoe worked great until it didn't. And on one long run, it was a total disaster, made my feet numb, did not like it, and I never wore it again. So then for another long run, I decided to screw it. Just go big or go home and try the next percent. And that was one of the better runs of my training cycle. However, my left foot still has a black toenail to this day. So then I was like, yeah, go really big or go home. And I got the Alpha Fly. And I wore this a couple times and decided I really don't like this shoe. I, I don't like it at all, in fact. So then I decided to take another super shoe out of the closet that I've been meaning to review, the Adidas Adios Pro 2. This shoe really helped my overpronation. And I honestly thought it was gonna be the one until I took it out on an 18 mile run. And when I tell you at the end of that run, my feet and legs were screaming. So as much as I'm really sad to say, this ain't it either. So then I started running in the Saki Endorphin Speed 2. And this is a fantastic shoe, really, really solid and very enjoyable ride. I do like the one better, but this is this is good too. But still, I am over pronating like crazy in this shoe. So it does give me some fleeting heel pain that doesn't last too long, it doesn't linger, but it kind of sticks me and then it kind of fades away. Not ideal, but I don't think it's a deal breaker. And then last but not least, a big old shoe arrived at my door, the Hoka Bondi X. And this has been kind of my go-to for all of my runs lately. So now that we're here with these two in my hand, um, I'm gonna say I'm down to these two for the Chicago Marathon and I'm kind of torn on which one to wear. I have given this a lot of thought and honestly, when you're watching this on Sunday, when it comes out, I still really don't know which one I'm gonna pick. Um, I like them both for different reasons and um, we're gonna talk about that today. We're not gonna go over all the details of the uppers and um, the midsole and the outsole like I usually do on like my which should you buy videos, but we are gonna talk about those categories and what I kind of like better about both shoes. And I also do wanna let you know that both of these shoes were sent to me by the brands Saucony and Hoka and by Running Warehouse. Um, however, none of the companies are gonna see this before you. They don't know I'm making this video. They can't tell me what to say. And all of my opinions, as always, are my own. And we'll get this out of the way too. The Saucony Endorphin Speed is $159.95 on runningwarehouse.com. And the Hoka Bondi X is $199.95 on runningwarehouse.com. So if you're interested in either of these shoes by the end of this video, just go to the link in the description of this video, click that link and pick up your own pair. I'll have a link for both of these shoes. Keep in mind, those are affiliate links with Running Warehouse. However, that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can sit here and seek guidance from those in the comments about which one I should wear on um, race day, which is probably a really not so great way to do it, but here we are. So right off the bat here, we're gonna talk about weight and I'm not gonna give you the exact weight of both the shoes. If you want to see that information, you can go to the full review of the Endorphin Speed 2 that I put out last week 
and the first run impressions of the Bondi X that was the week before that. But I will tell you that the endorphin speed is significantly lighter than the Bondi X. Now in my first run impressions for the Bondi X, I said don't get so caught up on the weight because you're not gonna feel it that much. And I still stand by that. I really don't feel like this shoe feels super duper heavy on foot. I mean, the carbon plate inside of it really do really does help. Um, but when you're putting it up against a shoe that is as light as the Speed 2 is, it does start to um, feel hard to justify the heft of this shoe. Will I feel the weight of the Bondi X during the marathon, those later miles? I don't know. Now, when it comes to uppers, I don't think that I have a specific favorite here. Um, I do like that perhaps the Speed 2 is like a little bit more minimal, but the Bondi X has a lot more room and um, I don't know, I just seem to enjoy the way the Bondi X feels a lot. Um, it does have a little bit of heel slippage, which I think I forgot to mention in the first run impressions video. Uh, a little bit of heel slippage here, but um, nothing too concerning. The endorphin speed is definitely a little bit more narrow, a slightly more aggressive-ish feel, um, but actually, you know, they're a little similar in terms of the upper material. I do think that the endorphin speed too is gonna be a bit more breathable. Um, but I took the Bondi X out today on like a cooler day. It's getting cooler here in New York, thank God. And I did feel some air passing through there. So, I mean, um, I, I can't say that I could base my decision off of the upper because I'm kind of indifferent. What it's really going to come down to here on what I decide on is the midsole. Now, very different midsoles. Here in the Speed 2, you have a P-backs based foam, which is a lot more performance based. People think P-ba, P-backs, they're like, oh, it's like the next percent. Kind of, but not really. Definitely super bouncy, a lot of energy return. And um, instead of using a carbon plate here, Saucony uses a nylon plate, which just helps to flex the foot a little bit better and I think makes it more versatile for me personally. And they got that speed roll technology to help you roll in your stride. Now in the Bondi X, we have EVA, but it's a new kind of EVA that Hoka's using. It's really, really soft, comfortable as heck. And um, this has a carbon plate in it, uh, which doesn't feel as jarring and as harsh as, you know, something like a Next% Percent or the Adios Pro 2, which has rods, but, you know what I mean? It's a very like subtle, nice roll forward and you feel it when you start to pick up the pace of it. Um, and then this also has a meta rocker technology to help you roll forward in your stride. So in terms of foam, of course, this is a little bit more aggressive, a little bit firmer-ish and just a lot more energy, energy return. Energy return. Whew, you okay? Okay. Gonna hang out there? And the Bondi X is just gonna provide me with plenty of cushion on race day, lots of comfort, and the benefit of that carbon plate. Now, I think a lot of people think about the Bondi X and they think about the regular Bondi and how it's heavy and kind of cumbersome and maybe not the best shoe for a race. Yes, but I think with the Bondi X, it's kind of like the perfect shoe for a marathon because you're gonna get the protection when your feet are really begging for it, that comfort and cushion. And um, you're also gonna have the benefit of a carbon plate and a rocker tech. So that is what definitely draws me to this shoe. Now with the speed, you're just gonna have a ton more energy return. Your foot's gonna sink into that foam a lot less and it's gonna kind of spring you up forward a little bit more. Um, I have, my longest run in this shoe I think is a 15 miler and in this shoe is a 20 miler. What I like about the endorphin speed is that for my 15 miler the other day, when I needed to pick up the pace for like the workout portion of my run, it had no problem doing so, obviously. That's where this shoe really does all of its amazing work. Now, past 15 miles, I don't know how this is gonna feel. I know that this shoe is gonna feel fine at 20 miles, but here, not so sure. It definitely has a firmer forefoot. And then another issue that I have with this shoe is um, the instability. Because of the PF issues that I was experiencing earlier in the year, I do get some fleeting heel pain, like I was saying earlier, that kind of comes and goes in this shoe, kind of jabs at me and then fades away. Can I deal with that on race day? Probably. Do I know what it's gonna feel like at 20 miles? 
Not necessarily. Do I think it'll be any different than how it felt at 15? No, but if you're mixing the little slightly firmer forefoot with the um, fleeting heel pain, then it's a little bit concerning. And that's kind of been like my big question mark and why I kind of like the idea of the Bondi X because um, while this shoe isn't gonna have as much pop and as much energy as the Speed 2 is, it has a much more stable platform. It is neutral, but it's got a big old wide platform as you can see and that helps with stability and that's kind of what I need. Yes, my foot does sometimes feel like it's sinking into that foam, but perhaps in the later miles of the marathon, it's not gonna be so bad. I mean, for 20 miles, it didn't feel like the shoe was like heavy as hell on my foot. Towards the end, I felt heavy as hell and I was really dragging ass, but I don't think it was the shoe's fault. That's kind of where I'm at here with these two shoes. When I think about the performance of the shoes and like being fast and all that fun stuff, then of course I'm gonna gravitate towards the Speed 2. Um, that's kind of a no brainer. And if I didn't have the PF instability issues that I have in it, it'd probably be my pick, but I do have those problems and I have to consider them because I don't wanna have a massive issue out there towards the end of the race and not finish the way I wanna finish. And I do just wanna say also that um, I have run some speed work in the Bondi X and I am absolutely able to get on my toes and it felt fine, it felt good. Does it feel as propulsive as the Speed 2? No, but it feels good and I think it's doable. As far as outsoles, this has little to nothing to do with my choice for race day. We got carbon rubber in the Speed 2 and we got just some blown rubber in the in the uh, Bondi X. It's looking like it's gonna be a sunny day that day so I don't think I'm gonna have to worry about any like extreme weather conditions. So that's plus. Um, so yeah, I don't know, don't really care either way. But isn't it crazy how this is a 10 and a half and this is a 10 and a half and they just look so different. I mean, really this heel extends out quite a bit so it's more like this. But still like this covers so much more surface area which is why it's just a lot more stable. I don't know, I mean, I'm really torn on this. If you would like to make a suggestion down below in the comments, please do so. But also please don't put another shoe in there that I haven't tried yet. It's too late in the game. And all the other shoes I showed earlier, I'm not wearing because I just don't feel confident that I'm gonna feel my best in them at the end of the day. So it's these two, these are the two options. I'm leaning toward one. But on Thursday, when I post my final training recap video, then I'll tell you guys which shoe I picked. Um, so yeah. If it's down to color, you know, this is kind of growing on me or it grew on me. This, I don't mind it. It's not my favorite, but it's not terrible. I'm digging it. Well, everybody, that concludes my video of me being clueless about which shoe I'm gonna wear for my marathon. That's in um, a week, a week from today when this video is posted. So we're doing great. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit that notifications bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Which one do you like? This one? Oh, okay. I have some more videos for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Heller. See you next time. Hopefully my shoes will be picked. Okay, you have to pick it on camera, so which one do you like? Oh gosh, you don't like any of them. She's an alpha fly girl.